Well, hi, thanks for joining me here. I'm going to be testing some unusual vacuum tubes here, and I thought I might as well shoot a video of it. And these are 2050 tubes. That's a number. Here's, here's one of them right here. 2050 tube. And uh, these are Fibertron tubes. They aren't like your regular vacuum tube, and they aren't used in many circumstances, but one place is in a jukebox. And that's why I'm testing them. The uh, jukebox I take care of is not working properly. And I suspect it's the Fibertron tube, which has been damaged by the failure of another component, a capacitor, in the, uh, in the jukebox. So the capacitor is replaced, but the uh, jukebox is still not responding properly. So I have some replacements here I want to test. The tube that's in there, in the... Uh, uh, jukebox. Uh, I did test. I used a different uh, tube tester, not this one. And uh, it tested uh, weak. Uh, but I could be my tube tester is not too good at it, my old one. So I'm going to run these ones through. i got four of them here to test. And we'll see. Now a Thyrotron tube is a very different sort of tube. It's basically like a switch. And when you apply a signal to the grid, a voltage to the grid, or the, the uh, tube will conduct. I, I believe it has mercury gas in it, I'm not really sure. And so it's nothing like a, a regular uh, a regular tube. So I'm just going through the special instructions here in the manual for my tube tester. And by the way, this is kind of interesting. Right in the front of the cover there. I don't know if you can read that. In the top right corner it says, Property of CFOX Radio, January 29, 1960. <laughs> so this this <coughs> tube tester belonged to a uh, radio station. CFOX. I'm not even sure it still exists. Um, so let's see. I've made all the settings. But it's a little peculiar from other tubes. It says rotate grid bias control to 45, insert tube in proper socket. Okay, so I'm going to do that. There we go. Into the proper socket. You know what, from that camera angle, you're actually not going to be able to see the result here. Let, let me set up the camera a little better so you can read the, uh, the meter up here as I'm doing this. Okay, very very tricky to get the lighting right so you can see the uh, scale, because the scale is white. <laughs> Nothing else is white here. That's why I have this white piece of paper here, to increase the amount of white in the view of the camera. So it'll adjust its uh, contrast and brightness. Right. Isn't there something? Let me just pull it out. Okay, so much for that. <laughs> so much for that. So, and sorry if things on its side, but that's just how it's going to be here. So, um, rotate grid binds, control to 45, insert tube. Okay, so this is set to 45, tubes inserted. Uh, turn on tube tester and make line check. Tube tester's on. Line check's right on. Depress the amplifier, rectifier, and diode switch to rectifier diode position. Okay, so that's this switch here. Slowly rotate the grid bias control down to zero. So I'm going to rotate this control down to zero. Observing the value of grid bias setting at which the meter suddenly deflects upscale. Like that. This is a test of the tube's control grid characteristic and the value of grid bias setting should fall between the limits given on the remarks column. Okay, so the remarks column is here. Should fire between 15 and 0. So somewhere over in this area. 15 and 0. The 2050. Let me make sure I got it right. Yeah, it looks right. With the amplitude rectifier and diode switch in the rectifier and diode position, the meter pointer 
must fall in the rectifier's OK position of the scale to be considered good. Rectifier's OK, that's up here. So the meter, I think once it fires, this should come up scale into this range. And I can see one heater going, only one though, but maybe that's normal. Okay, read it one more time, Jim, so you don't get it wrong. Slowly rotate grid bias control down to zero, observing value of grid bias setting at which meter suddenly deflects up scale. Okay, so hold that switch down. Keep an eye on there. Thirty. Twenty. Okay, any time now. Any time now. Come on. Don't freak me out here. And I'm down to zero. Just about. Bingo. Zero. Oh, you know, I hate this. Is this the tube tester doing it? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Back up, back up. Leakage test is not in the right spot. Okay, should be on, should be, I'm sure it should be in that position. Okay. As usual, it's me. Here we go again. Starting at 45. Kind of builds up the tension, doesn't it? Okay, here we go. 45, 40. I'm just watching that meter. 30. 25. Coming into the 15 range here. 20. Come on. Come on. You can do it. 15. Anytime now. Oh! There we are. And it shows way up in the rectifiers. Okay. Great. Seems to be just a certain range at which it goes. It doesn't talk about that in the book, but I think that's good. Test off, back to 45. That was tube number one. Now, the uh, jukebox that I'm working on uh, is in a restaurant They're operating just as it would have uh, back in 19... Oh. That's so good, eh? Something loose in this one. Just as it did back in the day. Uh, it's all original. And it's essentially been on... I, 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 in a, I don't know about its whole life history. Hmm. Um... But it's been that uh, restaurant, that particular location, for about 12, 13 years. It's been on 24-7. Full of all of its old parts, old tubes and everything. Including, including the 2050. Okay, we're ready now. Uh-oh, oh, that didn't look good. And I'd say that's a dudden. Ooh! That was barely in the socket. What's going on there? Listen to it. Uh, tubes are not supposed to sound like that. You know, I think this is busted. I think the glass is broken on this, just under here. Okay, so we'll say number two. This is number two? This is number three. Three is out of the picture. Three out. Now I got two that look almost brand new. I mean, just beautifully clean, like they've been in a box or something, but... Uh, they weren't. This is number... This would be number two. Get everything set. Yep. In we go. Yeah, there's only one heater. Uh, clearly. That's a more modern looking tube to me, but... Who knows? Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Okay. Will this tube fire where it should? See if it does the same thing where there's just a particular spot where it's good. Any time now. Come on, little tube. Oop, oh, oop, oh, there it goes. Uh, you can see the, uh, can you see it on the camera? Yeah, you can see it kind of going there. I'm trying to get it to, to be stable though. It's like a hair trigger, wow. Just got to very, very sensitive. So that's way up in the good, though. 
I didn't notice that the other two did that. Come on out. Mr. 2050. Okay, now. There's another one. This is a uh, number four. This one's quite dark on the top. I think that might indicate it's operated quite a bit. Give it a moment to warm up here. <coughs> well, I do have another one. I have another one. It's a. Uh, it says 2051 on it. 2051. And I can see from the settings here exactly the same settings in all respects. Okay, we're ready to go on this one. Here we go. <clears throat> Will it fire? 35, 30, 25, 20. Okay, we're hitting 15. And now we're in the range. That's why you got, oh, there, there's that spot. A little bit of dirt on my control here that might be affecting it. But you know, I think it's working. There we are. Very similar to the uh, the other two in terms of the reading you get. So like these are very much like switches. Okay, so let's try the 2051. Definitely says 2051. There go. This is the exciting part, of course. So, just to finish the uh, what I was saying about the jukebox, I think it's amazing that this thing has been sitting there on 24/7. Uh, and uh, essentially operating, except recently. Okay, there we go. Now the jukebox itself, if you drop a coin into the jukebox player, it works fine. You can make the selection, push the buttons, and it works fine. What doesn't work is the wall boxes. The wall boxes at each table, uh, when you make a selection, they send a series of pulses. Uh, to the jukebox, and the pulses are applied right to the grid of the 2050 tube, which causes the tube to fire like that, and uh, the uh, it's like a switch opening and closing, and then the current is used to operate a uh, stepper relay that essentially counts the number of pulses that are coming in. It's quite it's quite an affair. Here we go. 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Okay, looking for that sweet spot. Hello, sweet spot. Oh. Yeah, you can see the tube glows a little bit. Incredibly sensitive. I think it's the technique being used in this tester. Uh, not the same as my other tester. No. Oh. Yeah, I think I got dirty control here. There we go. Same number. So I think I've got four good tubes here. This one, this this one. <laughs> Let's try it again. It's heating up. Jukebox is a scary thing to try to take care of. Uh, it's many machines all in one. And uh, 
it's a challenge for me for sure here we go will it blow up maybe it'll just explode I should put on goggles here okay we're at 15 15 and 0 it should trigger yep look at that this one has a different characteristic I can move the control around I don't like the yellow ones that seem to be so sudden it's a very different behavior in this one. I can, we can, the other ones, it was just a spot where they worked. This one, once I get below about seven here, and away it goes. Well, considering what it sounds like and the fact that it works differently than the yellow ones, this is probably not a tube to be trusted. There we go. That was very exciting. I think it's time to start working on some actual uh, electronics here.